Just when the automotive world seemed to be shifting entirely towards electrification, Bugatti has dropped a bombshell, a V16 engine. Yes, you heard it right, a V16 engine, a feat unseen in production cars for over 80 years. It's like a blast from the past, resurrecting a legendary configuration in the modern era. So what's the deal with this V16 engine? Well, let's take a closer look. If we say we want to build a car that makes it to a top speed above 400 k per hour, you need to deliver. While specific details are still under wraps, leaked images give us a glimpse into what promises to be a remarkable piece of engineering. But to truly appreciate this innovation, we need to rewind and understand its roots, starting with the iconic Bugatti Veyron's W16 engine. A short period of time to get going in our factory, so the next race is running. Picture this, the Bugatti Veyron boasting an 8.0-litre W16 engine, essentially two VR ATS arranged at a 90-degree angle. With quad turbochargers and mind-boggling figures like 1,200 metric horsepower and 1,500 nanometers of torque, this powerhouse set new standards in the world of supercars. Its unique design, with double VR, 8S and quad turbos, made it a standout performer in the elite realm of automotive engineering. Now let's fast forward to the Bugatti Chiron. While it retains the 8.0-litre W16 configuration and quad turbochargers, it packs an even bigger punch, 1,600 metric horsepower and a whopping 1,600 nanometers of torque. But how did Bugatti manage to squeeze out even more power from this beast? The evolution from the Veyron to the Chiron might seem subtle at first glance, but the devil is in the details. Lots of things you would normally only find in Formula One cars. With increased power output and torque, Bugatti has pushed the boundaries of what's possible with a W16 engine. Be sure that you've still got enough weight on the front that it won't take off. It's a testament to their relentless pursuit of automotive excellence and innovation. It's all about emotions, it's all about agility. It's a car which is meant to be fast on windy roads, very quick. So what's next for Bugatti and their V16 engine? Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure. With Bugatti at the helm, we can expect nothing short of extraordinary. 40 years after Ettore Bugatti died, the Bugatti plant was still in use for producing airplane parts. It was no longer a key player in the automotive industry, and most people didn't associate the Bugatti name with excellence as they once did. In 1987, an Italian entrepreneur bought the company. He recalled the days of the Bugatti Royale and how the car combined racing with luxury. His goal was to reintroduce this type of Bugatti to a new generation. The company was now based in Modena, Italy, and began mass-producing luxury sports cars. They were an instant hit, and the Bugatti name was now cherished by luxury car enthusiasts all over the world. The success was so phenomenal that within a decade, Bugatti caught the eye of one of Europe's largest car companies. The 8.0-litre W16 engine has been propelling Bugatti's hypersports cars for almost 20 years. The only 16-cylinder engine in the world to be used in a car, it is a veritable engineering masterpiece that has become an icon in its own right. This look back at the story of its evolution and development is a declaration of love to one of the most impressive powertrains ever created. 16 cylinders, displacement of 8 litres, 1001 PS. When Bugatti published the first technical details about the engine for the Veyron 16.4 in 2005, it instantly changed the game. It was sensational. Never before, had a production vehicle featured an engine which was so powerful yet so compact and able to cruise as easily as it could obliterate acceleration records. 
at Bugatti are the finest, but also the lightest available. We use lots of magnesium, titanium, carbon, and aluminum, lots of things that you would normally only find in Formula One cars. Pumping 400 kilometers per hour and can accelerate from zero to 100 in less than three seconds. We're talking about numbers and performance that are somehow unreal. But this simply represents a lot of work at the development and also at the production level to ensure this performance is always achieved. Its power output was unparalleled at the time. Acceleration from 0 to 100 km per hour in just 2.5 seconds and a top speed of over 400 km per hour. When the Veyron 16.4 went into production, it marked a pioneering achievement for Bugatti and established an entirely new class of car in the process. The Veyron was the world's first hyper-sports car. And it wouldn't have been possible without the WW16 Bugatti unveiled its successor, the Chiron, in March 2016. And once again, achieved the unexpected. We always have physical boundaries based on technical circumstances, but boundaries can be pushed. What was once thought to be an unachievable amount of power in a road car in Veyron was surpassed by around 50% in Chiron. Yes, it was an 8.0-litre W16. And yes, it had four turbochargers, just like Veyron. But achieving new levels of performance meant looking at every single component afresh. Most importantly, larger turbochargers and a duplex fuel injection system with 32 injection valves was fitted with a greater use of carbon and titanium to help offset increases in weight. With its power output of 1,500 PS initially, subsequently increased to 1,600 PS and maximum torque of 1,600 nanometers, the WW16 engine changed the course of performance car history yet again. Its development was a lengthy process. In 1997, standout engineer Ferdinand Karl Piech, chairman of the board of management of Volkswagen AG at the time, presented VW's head of engine development, Karl Heinz Neumann, with the initial idea, drawing it on an envelope while traveling on the Shinkansen high-speed train from Tokyo to Osaka. His idea was an engine with 18 cylinders, but it would subsequently be modified to become the WW16 we know today. A fitting homage to the 16-cylinder engine developed by Ettore Bugatti himself. Gregor Gries, who was one of the first Bugatti employees during its rebirth 20 years ago, and until February 2022, was the company's head of technical development, reminisces. At the time, no one really believed there could be a vehicle for the road that boasted 1,000 PS. We wanted to prove we could construct an engine that was not only powerful, but also manageable. You start working where others have stopped. The engineers started from scratch. We had to engage in basic development for every component. Every vehicle part had to be constructed anew and tested, even the engine test bench. The only thing we didn't change was the pencils we used for drawing, says Gregor Gries, laughing. We felt like Ettore Bugatti back in the day. He too always developed his own tools. The engineers took Ferdinand Piech's idea sketched on an envelope and evolved it into a production reality. No bigger than a V12 and weighing around 400 kg, the engine has the unique arrangement of cylinders in AWW configuration to thank for its compact size. Two eight-cylinder blocks are set at an angle of 90 degrees to one another, boosted by four exhaust gas turbochargers. But the challenges that Karl-Heinz Neumann and his team faced to transform the W16 into a reality were immense. Back then, there was no literature or empirical data for production engines with more than 12 cylinders 
or for production vehicles that could go faster than 350 kilometers per hour, relates Neumann. One thing proved to be a particular headache. The car had to stay grounded, its power had to stay on the road, which isn't easy at these speeds. But proving it was possible to construct an engine that could deliver this was incredibly cool. There was a real sense of fulfillment when the W16 was finally up and running. Bringing the engine to life required more than 3,500 individual parts, each assembled by hand, and the work monitored throughout by test computers. On its first ever test in 2001, the double biturbo engine achieved the required 1,000 plus 1 PS right off the bat. The theory and the execution could not have been better. We build a car that does over 400 kilometers an hour and drives elegantly to the opera in the evening. To do this, you need not only a car that can achieve this, but also an engine that's capable of driving in the summer and winter, in cities, traffic jams, as well as on racetracks, and that's something of a challenge. Zwagen is adept at building good engines for the road, for golf, but this combination of two worlds is Bugatti's specialty. But such were the leaps in performance that traditional engine test bench and ventilation systems could not cope with the new WW16 new systems had to be specially developed. There were also new requirements not previously asked of a production vehicle, such as the fact the very hot exhaust gas needed to be channeled. A titanium exhaust system on a scale not previously seen in the automotive sector was ultimately part of the solution. With performance secured, the engineers turned their attention to smoothness and reliability as a 16-cylinder setup offers naturally smooth running, detecting a misfire or knocking in the engine by traditional methods would be unreliable. Bugatti therefore developed Bugatti Ion Current Sensing, BIS, to monitor the ion current flowing at each spark plug. If the system detects knocking combustion or a misfire, the ignition timing is slowed, the cylinder deactivated, or the boost pressure reduced every single cylinder can run right at its limit of performance. I'm one of a total of eight technicians worldwide who are permitted to build this engine in series. From the outset, our aim was to generate maximum engine performance in a stable, clean manner, explains Gregor Gries, former head of development at Bugatti, who has been responsible for engine and transmission development since Bugatti's rebirth. Absolutely crucial to the continued reliability of the W16 engine was its cooling system and, as you would expect, it was engineered on a scale never before seen in the automotive industry. A complex water cooling system featuring two water cycles keeps the W16 within the required temperature range, even at extreme full loads. 40 liters of water flows through the high temperature cycle with three coolers in the front end to keep the engine at its operating temperature. The low temperature cycle with a separate water pump contains 15 liters of cooling water to bring the turbocharger's heated charge air down by as much as 130 degrees in two heat exchangers on the engine. There are also coolers each for the differential oil, transmission oil, and engine oil, as well as a heat exchanger for the air conditioning system. Placement of eight liters over a thousand horsepower is a conventional task. You add turbochargers to it, at some point you achieve that power, and then you're faced with a big problem that you can't find a test bench anywhere in the world that can cope with this power. The W16 is incorporated into the Veyron as a longitudinally mounted mid-engine with seven-speed dual-clutch transmission located in front of the engine. Turbochargers are usually added to boost the power of small engines. In the case of Bugatti, the basic motor already boasts sufficient power output, but the four turbochargers build on these strong foundations to create something truly incomparable. Being on the road with the W16 means having a limitless feeling of power and performance of infinite performance. Whatever the speed, the engine has sufficient reserves for additional acceleration in any situation. When a quick switch is made from cruising to fast driving, the W16 remains smooth and commanding and never feels strained. This unique boundlessness is what our customers find so beguiling. 
relates Pierre-Henri Raffinel, Bugatti's pilot officiel, who has driven Veyron and Chiron for well over 100,000 kilometers. With the engine of the Veyron 16.4, Bugatti showed even before mass production that only an exceptional team could realize this engine concept. The engine is tortured for up to 1,000 hours on the test bench. If an engine has survived that, it can survive anything. Only with the immeasurable commitment of the employees could this standout engine be improved, redesigned, and perfected again and again over the years, says Bugatti Automobiles president Christophe Piochon, who still raves about everyone's untiring will to not give up. This unique engine encapsulates the Ettor Bugatti credo. If comparable, it is no longer Bugatti. The sound of the engine is as unique as the engine itself. Thanks to an entirely standalone asymmetric firing order with firing gaps of just 45 degrees, its sound is unlike any other engine concept. Balanced and comfortable in the lower load range, it increasingly becomes a growling beast as the load increases, and all without mechanical noise interference. The engineers continued to optimize the engine over the years. With enlarged turbochargers and many other modifications, the W16 delivered 1,200 PS in the Veyron 16.4 Supersport from 2010. That same year, the Supersport set a speed record of 431.072 km per H as the fastest road legal production Supersports car, thereby earning itself an entry into the legendary Guinness Book of records. The driver's hearing is an entirely unconscious process. Nevertheless, he needs specific information. He wants to know when the road changes. He wants to know whether the engine RPM is too low or too high. He wants to know what the absolute vehicle speed is via the wind noises. If any of this information is missing, the vehicle is perceived as unharmonious. A V16 engine is a 16-cylinder piston engine where two banks of eight cylinders are arranged in a V configuration around a common crankshaft. V16 engines are less common than engines with fewer cylinders, such as V8 and V12 engines. Each bank of a V16 engine can be thought of as a straight eight, a design that can be inherently balanced. Most V16 engines have a 45 degree bank angle. The first use of a V16 engine was in the 1910 Antoinette 7 experimental aircraft followed by several cars in the 1930s. Today, the most common applications for V16 engines are railroad locomotives, marine craft, and stationary power generators. The production of automobiles started life with relatively small engines, but as luxury cars emerged in the 1920s, car makers began developing larger V8 and V12 engines. Some companies even went as far as to create massive V16S. Along with the bigger and larger displacement V12 and V16 engines came the W12 and W16 versions. However unpopular they were, simply because when one came out onto the market, the other had to give it a go as well. Although these engines delivered lower vibration, thus increasing comfort inside the cabin, they typically produced as much power as a V8 or V12 engine, while being notably more expensive to produce. As a result, they were rarely used in automobiles, which is a shame because they ran so smoothly. A V16 eliminates gaps in the power pulse by having three cylinders in the top position at all times. The V16 debuted in production road cars in the United States in the early 1930s due to a tech war between Marmon and Cadillac. Both companies wanted to be the first to produce a working V16 engine that they could use in a new road car they had coming out. Since the upcoming V12 was the engine in the limelight and the only one that had the attention of the media when the V16 was introduced under the hood of the new model, the public, media and even the lower level Cadillac salespeople and employees were caught entirely by surprise. The V16 was a new engine built to propel a new model to the top of the food chain in 1930 and beyond. The W configuration is notably different than the more familiar V layout 
because they feature three or four cylinder banks on the same crankshaft. When viewed from the front, the layout resembles the letter W. However, these engines also feature 16 cylinders, so they have a well-deserved place on this list. W16 engines are notably scarcer than V16 mills. While the latter made its first appearance in a car in 1930, the W16 did not debut in an automobile until 1995. A one-off supercar, it was developed by Ramon Jimenez, a French motorcycle racer, as a tribute to the iconic Porsche 917. Development reportedly started in 1985 in a small workshop in Avignon, where Jimenez made his own carbon fiber composite panels from scratch. A single car was finished in 1995, powered by a 4.1 liter WW16, created by combining four Yamaha FZR 1000 motorcycle engines. The W16 was rated at 560 horsepower and enabled the Novia to hit a verified top speed of 236 miles per hour, a record at the time. Introduced in 2005, the Veyron was the first series production car with such an engine. The power plant was created by joining two Volkswagen VR8 engines at the crankcase and placing them on a single crankshaft. Considered a technological wonder, the quad-turbo W16 in the Veyron debuted with 987 horsepower and 882 pound-feet of torque. However, it was later upgraded to deliver 1,184 horsepower. The engine helped Bugatti set a world top speed record of 253.8 miles per hour with Veyron in 2005 and 267.8 miles per hour with the Veyron Supersport in 2010. The same engine was used in the Bentley Hunaudier, Audi Rosemeyer and Bugatti 16C Galibier concept cars. The Bentley and the Audi featured earlier naturally aspirated versions of the mill. The Veyron remained in production for 10 years, spawning a handful of variants and countless special edition models. The Chiron replaced the Veyron in 2016 and continued the legacy of the 8.0-liter W16. A heavily redesigned car inside and out, the Chiron also features an updated version of the quad-turbo WW16. The latter was built to celebrate a new top speed record achieved with a prototype model at 304.7 miles per hour, making the Chiron the first production car that broke the 300 miles per hour barrier. Bugatti's plan to say goodbye to its iconic W16 engine involved developing a roadster based on the Chiron. However, they wanted the open top Bugatti to radiate a unique identity. Therefore, the automaker developed the Mistral, the name of a wind that blows through the Rhone Valley to the Mediterranean, from scratch. Company head Poncho Emilio Cervo said as Bugatti never intended to have a roadster model on the Chiron lineup, it had to develop the Mistral from the ground up. Drawing inspiration from past Bugattis, like the 1934 Type 57 Roadster Grand Rapid, the automaker began designing the platform for the W16's last performance. The Mistral and the ancient Type 57 share several similarities, including swooping rear aerodynamic elements. Mirroring founder Ettor Bugatti's love for the black and yellow color schemes, the automaker gave the debut Dada U16 Mistral the colors of a bee. Most of the work involved in developing the Mistral involved designing the car to meet safety standards and withstand enormous speeds while maintaining Bugatti's design philosophy. Bugatti claims increased chassis rigidity and used lightweight composite materials to reduce weight. The automaker also added that it built a new advanced air intake system specifically for the Mistral. The final Bugatti W16 had to dazzle the automotive world. The engine had to sing the finest swan song ever heard in the automotive arena. Therefore, 
Bugatti bolted the Bugatti Chiron Supersport 300 Plus's engine, the most potent W16 mil in automotive use, onto the Mistral's chassis. With such a powerful engine, the Mistral would surely outperform Bugatti's last roadster, the Grand Sport Vitesse, which maxed out at 254 miles per hour, making it one of the fastest Bugattis ever made. In an era when downsizing is in vogue, some might have expected Bugatti would ditch the 16-cylinder layout for an engine with fewer cylinders. However, Bugatti did the most Bugatti thing ever, announcing it would ditch the W16 for a V16 featuring angular position of the rear wing. The, the automaker flaps posted the a clip of the V16 the and its intoxicating tune, exciting automotive enthusiasts worldwide. With Remac involved in the engine's development, Bugatti's next 16-cylinder powertrain may just be its most potent yet. Rimac, an electric hypercar manufacturer, and Bugatti merged to form Bugatti Rimac, with the Croatian company holding a 55% stake in the company. Company chief executive mate Rimac told Top Gear that Bugatti's German owners wanted the next Bugatti to be fully electric. He said all the company would have had to do was rebadge the Nevera into a Bugatti. However, he fought against VW and Porsche's vision, insisting that upcoming Bugattis had to have combustion engines with hybrid tech. Mate Remac won, which means that for the foreseeable future, Bugattis will have hybrid powertrains. He said that the next Bugatti would be entirely new, sharing no parts with past Remacs or Bugattis. Despite hearing the rumble of the upcoming V16 engine, we haven't received detailed information about it. There's no word on horsepower and torque figures, engine capacity, cylinder count, or number of turbos. Mate Rimac promised, however, that we would be surprised.